12 chapter 17, the battle lines are drawn between Israel and the Philistines. Okay? And, and the Philistines are on one hand, on side, I, I, imagine, I imagine a hill, two hills, and a valley in between. That's my imagination. And I imagine that the Philistines are on one hill, and, and the Israelites are on one hill. And, and they are gearing one another to fight. And for days on end, they are coming. And, they are, and, and Goliath, okay? The Bible says he was close to 10 feet tall. Goliath is touting, you know, the, the, the soldiers of God. Okay, all of Saul's elite soldiers, special forces, wamekuja pale, wamejaribu, wanajaribu pigana nae, lakini yako 10 feet tall, close to 10 feet tall. You know 10 feet is, Reverend, we ndiyo mjesh, wanajenga, 10 feet ni wapi, ni kama idrisha, karibu idrisha nyeupe. Karibu idrisha nyeupe, mali inaanza, karibu ile idrisha ya juu, mali inaanza. That's about 10 feet. Sindio? Ni kweli? Ama ni juu zaidi? Ni hapo. Naona kama ni hapo. Sasa una imagine mtu, mtu ambaya yuko pale. The average person is, is between kama hapa five and six. So, so he's about twice as tall as the average person. And, and nani, jitu pandikizi. The Bible says that his javelin weight, I don't know, six pounds. Six pounds ni kama three kilograms. The, the head of his peer, kichu acha mkuki wake kilikuwa kama three kilograms. Kichu acha mkuki tu. This guy is tall. This guy is, is big. And so there is enough of a challenge. And verse 4 says, Then Goliath, the Philistine champion from God, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. Okay, let's go on. He wore a bronze helmet and his bronze coat of mail weighed 125 pounds. That is, that is close to what? 50, past 50 kilograms. Let's go on. He also wore a bronze leg. Go to seven. Go to seven. Okay, the shaft of his gear to Nambua Mamboyake go to eight. Okay, Goliath stood and shouted a tout across. Nikama ku kufanya ni what is a tout? Nikama ku you know kuakasirisha. Why are you coming out? Why are you all coming out to fight? He called. I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man, come down here and fight with me. Ana mwambia, wacha tumalize hii maneno araka raka. Hii maneno tunashinda tukiwa watu wengi. Nyinyi mukufe watu wengi, sisi tukufa watu wengi. Hii maneno ni rahisi. Tumalize hara. Nyinyi chagueni mtu mmoja, mimi nitakuja hapa tupigane. Yule atakaye shinda, basi wengine watakuwa uh, the slaves. Hmm? Watumwa wao. Nyinyi mkitushinda, sisi tutakuwa watumwa wa Israeli. Mimi ni kimshinda huyo jamaa wenu. Nyinyi mutakuwa watumwa wa wafilisti. Of course, kila mtu anaona hiyo inafaa. Si, ni, ni kweli. Badole watu wengi wafe, kwanini tusichukue moja upande huu, moja wa Tumalize hii kazi ya rakaraka, yeah. wanasema 6 a.m. By 10 a.m. tuwe tumemaliza voting, unasikia hiyo luga, ni wanasema hii mamo ni raisi. Okay? Alafu, go to verse 20, go to verse, go to verse 10, verse 10, I defy the armies of Israel. And, and I'm here, I curse. Eh? I curse the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight. Who will fight me 11. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. Waliposikia hii, wakawa terrified. Verse 24. 24. 24. 24. Ishirin nane. As soon as the Israelites army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Kila siku waliwa kuja, wakimuona tu hivya kusimama. Wata wanakitoa. Hakuna mtu antaka kusimama. Verse 26. Verse 26. Daudi alikuwa nikijana mdogo. Alikuwa akichunga, okay, mbuzi na kondoo wa baba yake malishoni. Jamazake walikuwa katika vita. Okay, his brothers, his bigger brothers. Unakumbuka the story of Samuel. Samuel says, you know, this one is tall, Eliab. Anasema antaku muagilia mafuta. Mungu anasema ni apana. Daudi alikuwa kule malishoni. Na Daudi ya kawa ametumwa na baba yake kuja kuletea eh, jamazake chakula kidogo na kuangalia wanafanyaji wako na mnagani. Of course, his father was worried. There is a giant called Goliath. My sons might be dead. I want to find out, right? David asked the soldier standing nearby, what will a man get? For killing this Philistine and ending this defiance of Israel. Eh? Atatrapatia mnini, atapewa nini yule atamaliza ujinga huu. Eh? Na anasema, who is this pagan Philistine anyway? What is he allowed 
that is allowed to defy the armies of the living God. David alikuwa at a different attitude. Wakati watu wengine waliona 10 feet tall, David saw the living God. Praise the name of the Lord. David saw an uncircumcised Philistine. He saw him from the perspective of God. He looked at him from the eyes of God. The, 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 the brothers and Saul and everybody else looked at them from the perspective of a human being. But David had a different perspective. He was of a different spirit. He looks at Goliath and he does not see 10 feet tall. He sees an uncircumcised Philistine. He sees someone who is standing before the armies of God. He sees the host of heaven in their thousands upon thousands on the side of Israel. He does not see the Philistine. He was of a different kind of spirit. In fact, the Bible says, God says, a man after my own heart. This is where David was coming from. As a man after God's own heart, that is what he saw. His perspective was different. Jinsi yake ya kuangalia ilikuwa tofauti. Bwana asifiwe. So anasema, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who defies, who dares defy the armies of God. David was a giant killer before he killed Goliath. David did not become a giant killer wakati aliua Goliath. No. He was a giant killer. Deep inside him was a giant killer. And he was facing a giant. So he did not see the giant because he had killed giants. Deep inside him was the living God. And therefore, he was a giant killer. How do you cultivate such an attitude of a conqueror? We're going to look at a number of lessons from the life of David that would help us cultivate this kind of attitude. And so I'm just going to go through chapter 17, reading verses 25 to 26. Okay, that's where we're going to go. Go, go back to 25. Go back to 25, okay? David, you know, David had heard the soldiers, okay, talking among themselves. And they were saying, have you seen the giant? The men asked, he comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife. And the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. David Akawa Meskia Yo. I love, wakati anauliza verse 26, who, what, what will the man get who kills this giant? He's not asking that out in a vacuum. He's asking that because as he's been coming, alivokuwa akija, kuatembele hawa, alikuwa meskia fununu. Sasa anauliza, ati nikweli, ati, ati mmesema nini? Ati mmesema yule ambaye, atahua huyu giant, atapewa nini? Ati nimesikia nini? Are you guys serious? And nobody, David is asking, and nobody, hakuna mwanaume hapa, amejitokeza, yani melezewa kwama mtapewa binti ya mfaulme. You know, being married to the king's daughter is basically joining the royal family. It wasn't just marrying a girl. Now, of course, David must have heard that the girl was beautiful, that the girls of the king were beautiful. Remember what the Bible talks about Saul, that he was a height above all Israel, that he was handsome. And so David, David, Saul's daughters were definitely beautiful. And people were singing their praises. So David has been hearing these stories. But he asked himself, is it really true? So he, he, he drops the, the food with his brothers. And then he walks around among the soldiers. And he listens. And he hears this. In verse 25, they are talking among themselves. Na wanasema kili atapewa. Alafu 26 anauliza. 26 anauliza. 26 anauliza. David has a soldier standing nearby. He, re he really saying, what did you say? What did I hear? Is this what I've heard true? What will a man, what did you say a man will get for killing this Philistine and ending this hopelessness? David and Auliza Ivio. Who is this pagan anyway? Mtu ambaye hamjuu mungu. Na natu, anatuzubaisha hapa. Na hamjuu mungu. Eh? Mtu ambaye a pagan. Na anakuja kutusumbua, sumbua hapa. Na sisi ndiyo tunamjua mungu. That he's allowed to defy the armies of the living God. Ya kwamba anakubaliwa. What is to defy? Kudharao. Majeshi ya mwana mungu. Unajua? Kufanya nini? Kudunisha. Majeshi ya yahwe. Ya I am who I am. There is a lot going through the mind of David when he's going through this story. 
There's a whole lot going on. We don't have time to talk about it, so we'll jump through. Paul had the same attitude. So David, David says, what did you say will be given? Atapewa nini. If you are going to be a victor, you have to stop focusing on the problem and focus on the reward. Focus on the reward. Utapewa nini. Now Paul is of the same attitude. Paul says, there is laid for me a crown of righteousness that will be given to me, but not just to me, but to all those who love his appearing. When that business gets tough, ask yourself, suppose the ideas I have actually work. Suppose they work. What will I get? See that wonderful building. See your kids going to the best schools in the world. See yourself driving that car that you have dreamed of. See! Because unless you see, you cannot get it. God is not used to giving people what they cannot see. God has to show you something before he gives it to you. Because if he shows this to you, you will pursue it. And the moment you see it, now you have a license to pursue it. Praise the name of the Lord. Focus on the reward. If you are going to be a conqueror, if you are going to overcome those obstacles, you are going to have to focus on the reward. Verse 28 to 30. Verse 28 to 30. But when David's oldest brother, Eliab, had David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing ar around here anyway? What about those few sheep you are supposed to be taking care of? I know that you are pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. And Eliab 29. 29, what have I done now? David replied. I was only asking a question. David ignores them, okay? Verse 33, verse 33. 33. Don't be ridiculous. So David goes to Saul. You see, David is talking to his brothers. His brothers are telling him, Wewe, kijana mdogo, rudi malishoni. Unafanya nini hapa? Nauna umekuja tu kuangalia hii battle. Eh? Wana mdarao. Alafu, anaenda kwa Saul. Saul anasikia kuna kijana ambaye anasema anaweza hii maneno kumalize hii vita na na, na mwosho mmoja eh? one 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 blow and we finish this thing and so all, some people actually think maybe maybe there is something in him maybe maybe there is something wacha tumpeleke kwa mfalme na Saul anauliza juu yake David anapelekwa kwa mfalme Saul ana, anamwambia ati umesema nini okay i can find anamwambia wacha wacha upuzi don't be silly there is no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You can't fight him. And if you fight him, you cannot win. Okay? Okay? You are only a boy and he's been a man. Okay? A man of war since the youth. You know? How many, how many know that story? There is no way you can win against the system. How many understand that language? There is no way you can win against the system. You know? Wa mejipanga, hakuna jinsi ambavyo uneza shinda. You know? But someone said, this is a contest between light and darkness. This is a contest between the armies of God. This is a contest between those who think and those who believe in the living God. This is a different kind of contest. And we have to look at it from that perspective. We have to not see the giant. We have to see the armies of the Lord, the host of heaven on our side. We have to think clearly, like Jehoshaphat who said, with them is an arm of flesh. With us is the Lord our God to fight our battles and give us victory. Praise the name of the Lord. So, David did something. He ignored the haters and the naysayers. He ignored them. Potele Ambali. Wacha waonge, wacha waseme, wacha waseme wanayosema. Lakini mimi namjua, Paul says, I know him who I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have entrusted unto him against that day. What has God, what have you entrusted unto God? I know the plans I have for you. You know, this is the way, this is the way faith works. Faith works this way. God entrusts something to you and then you entrust it to him. You surrender it to him. And that is why Paul is saying, remember Paul had a calling and a gift. I know what I have believed. I know the encounter on the road to Damascus. I know what the Lord spoke to me about. And I know what he has put in me. I also know what I have given unto him. I know. 
If you know who you have believed, you will not listen to the naysayers. You will ignore those haters. You will ignore those who are calling you names because you know who you have believed. David did that. It can be done. It can be done. What has the Lord spoken? It can be done. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's go on. Verse 34 to 37, 34 says, But David persisted. David now is responding to Saul. Saul anamwambia, I iwezi. You see, his brothers have told him no. The king has told him no. Everybody is telling him he's a boy. But he decides to ignore them. And he doesn't argue with his brothers. Okay? David says, I have been taking care of my father's sheep. And when I was taking care of my father's sheep and goat, sheep and goat a lion and a bear came to steal a lamb from the flock. Verse 35 Verse 35, I, go, I, I went after it with a club and rescued the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns against me, I catch it by the toe, I club it to death. Verse 36, 36, I have done this to both lions and bears, and I will do this to the pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm be, this is not my first gig. This is not the first time I've been in battle. No, I may be a boy, but this is not my first trial. David remembers the God of yesterday. David remembers the God of yesterday. If you are going to be a conqueror, you are going to have to dig deep into your memory of what God has done in your life in the past, of the obstacles he has helped you overcome. You are going to have to stand on what God has done in your life in the past, beginning with the story of your salvation from darkness unto light. And when you stand on those promises, when you stand on those experiences, you can have confidence in the God of tomorrow. So if you remember the God of yesterday, you can have confidence in the God of tomorrow. You can have confidence in the God of tomorrow. Always remember the God of yesterday. I challenge you people to keep a journal of what the Lord has done. To write a story of how far the Lord has brought you. To remind yourself what God has done in your life. So that when the going gets tough, you go back and read that journal. And see, at this point, this is what I faced and God saw me through. At this point, this is what I faced and God saw me through. You will have confidence in the God of tomorrow. Buona si fiwe. Number that, num, page that, I mean, verse 38 to 40. 38. Then Saul gave David his armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. Go on. David put it on, strapped the sword over it and took a step or two to see what, what it was like. For he had never worn such a thing before. Okay. I can't go in this, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. Okay, verse 40, he picked up five smooth stones from a stream, put them into the shepherd's bag, armed only with the shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistines. What do we see here? David did not put on the armor that he was not used to. David was not a typical soldier. David was a shepherd boy. During in the field, there are no, there are no, there, there's no armor. When the lion comes and you're herding sheep, you don't herd your sheep with armor. So David is not used to these things. But he's used to picking a stone when he sees a lion. He's used to a sling. He's used to a club. That's what he's used to. But he can't pick the club because Goliath is 10 feet tall. You hit him with a club, the club will break. So David puts on his armor, not the common man's armor. Not the common person's armor. His own armor. Do not fight like the world does. The Bible says we do not wage war like the world does. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Don't ask if we We don't fight the way the world fights. And when you go into that business and things get tough, you know that our fight is fought on the knees. They may come with javelins and everything. They may come with midnight meetings. They may come with so many other things. But we come in the name of the Lord. Our battle is spiritual. And every time we see these battles, we see God. We see a contest between good and evil. 
We do not fight good and evil with machine guns and everything and money. No, we fight on our knees. The greatest battles and the greatest victories are won on our knees. We do not use the weapons of this world. We use the weapons of heaven. We use weapons that are not carnal. They are spiritual and yet they are mighty through God. I'll give you an example. So, when I graduated out of the university, I had not planned to tell you this. I went to work in Kibwezi. So I spoke a little Kamba. In fact, by the time I finished that one year, I spoke Kamba fluently. Don't ask me if I speak it fluently now. I mixed it up with other languages from other countries and I forgot my Kikamba. So now, I speak Kamba and I find myself mixing it with Chichewa. Okay? That's a story for another day. But I go to Kibwezi and there is a university project that is sponsored by the Germans and the Israelis. Okay? And the project is corrupted. Nothing is going on well. Why? Because those who are supposed to be herding the sheep are eating the sheep. Okay? Wale na ilikuwa 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 project ya ya mbuzi na kondo by the way wale waliotakana kuwa wanalinda kondo wale wakubwa walikuwa wanakula kwa kondo sasa mimi nikaingia pale na wokovu wangu kijana mdogo nimetoka chuo kikuu eh? all i know is jesus right and i also know the science right so i come in there and i'm taking over the project and i have been brought to take over this project because the project is failing and, and my boss is hoping that I will resuscitate it. But as I get there, I discover there are systems in place that will not allow me to do what I need to do. So, as I start working, I am told, Sasa, huyu, the big boss, anendaga kitui. Na huyu, dogo wake, anendaga zanziba. Wewe utaenda wapi? Literally, that is what they told me. Wewe utaenda wapi? I actually said, Enda uambie hivi. Mahali mimi naenda hawawezi fika na hawajui. Mahali naenda hawajui na hawezi kufi. And I say to my God, thank you so much for this revelation. You have brought cause them to tell me that they are actually working against me. Now I can go to my knees. And as I went to my knees, I told God, you have heard everything. I have given a testimony and I am coming to you. My life is in your hands. And I am going to do my work the best way I know how. And I am not going to succumb to these Philistines. And I know you will not let me down. And I went on with my work. Believe you me, I shoved them to the side, to the left and to the side. And by the time I finished that one year, the harvest in that project, the productivity in that project had never been seen before. It had never ever been seen. And they started saying, Kwa ningugi anafanya nini? They started saying, Kwa ningugi anafanya nini? Praise the name of the Lord. Do not be a copycat fighter. Ask God for his strategy. As you go into business, what are people doing? Nasikia watu wananunua hii, wanafanya hii. The greatest challenge in business in Kenya is copycatting. Watu hawana idea zao, wana copy tu za wenyewe. Uliza mungu yu idea ambaye mtu hawezi kukopi. Mwana asifiwe. Na usikopi idea za watu, tafuta your own strategy. As we raise, as you work in that church department, ask God for strategy. Ask God for his strategy. Don't copycat. Because there is a unique strategy for your unique position. There is a unique strategy for your unique place. There is a unique strategy that would work at Glorious that wouldn't work in the next door church. So if we copy what works there, it won't work here. Ask God for his strategy. Uh, 41 to 44. 2041. 41 in a sema. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield uh, beaver bearer ahead of him. With his shield bearer ahead of him. Sneering in contempt at this rudy faced boy. Yani, Daudi alikuwa kijana too. He was, it, it seems to me like he was short and stout. That is what David looks like to me, but maybe I'm wrong. But that is me. Okay? Lakini Rudy Nasema is rough and rugged. Okay? Uh, let's go on. Okay? Am I a dog? He roared that you come to me with a stick 
and he cursed David by the name of his God. Mimi ni umbwa. Yaani alikuwa amedharau the soldiers of Israel. Akalete wakali ambako katamdharau yeye. Bwana asifiwe. He despised the soldiers of God and God brought him something that showed him contempt. You know the Bible says to those who are crooked God will show himself shrewd. To those who are crooked God will show himself shrewd. Wewe anamwambia ulidharau hawa sasa nitakuletea yule ambaye atakudharau wewe. Bwana asifiwe. Alafu David says what? Go on, go on 44. Come over here and I will give you a flesh to the birds of the wild animals. Go on. 45. 45. Uh, David replied to the Philistines, You come to me with a sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of the heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have defiled. What do we see here? We see that David refused to be intimidated. Alikata kutiwa woga. Sawa? alikata kutiwa iwoga he resolved not to be afraid there will be enough reasons for you to be afraid if you are going to conquer there will be more than enough reasons for you to be afraid they are going to shout they are going to tell you how much money they have they are going to say how much they have the system in their pockets but we come to them in the name of the lord They can go ahead and come to us with all the machinery. They can go ahead and come to you with all the money and all the competition and all the connections and all the networks, but you will come to them in the name of the Lord our God. Refuse to be intimidated. Do you know that there are 365 fear knots in the Bible? In the Bible, one for every day. Usiogope moja kwa kila siku. Kwa hiyo wakati unaona uoga unaogopa, unakuingia, unasema hapana, si kuna fear not ya leo. Si kuna kwamba usiogope ya leo, natangaza hiyo. Kwamba sitaogopa kwa sababu siku usiogope yangu ya leo itafanya kazi. Bwana asifiwe. So fear not, refuse, decide not to be intimidated. Okay? Verse 45, David says, you come to me with spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord who you have defied. Verse 46 in the layer Today the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your head and then I will give the dead bodies uh, dead bodies of your men to the birds of the air and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Bwana asifiwe. David acknowledged the battle was not his but the Lord's. It is the Lord who says I know the plans I have for you. It is the Lord who has a plan for you. As you realize that plan and as you seek to implement it you are not fighting a battle with your neighbors you are not fighting a battle with the next door, uh, storekeeper you are not fighting a battle with the next teacher you are fighting the battle for the lord bwana asifiwe realize and acknowledge the battle is not yours it is the lord the battle is not yours it is the lord verse 48 to 50 and i'm now wrapping up as david moved as goliath moved closer to attack david quickly ran out to meet him go on Reaching into his shepherd bag, he, he took out a stone, hurled it with his sling, and hit the Philistines in the forehead. The stone sank in Goliath's temple. Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. Verse 50. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. With only a sling and a stone. Sometimes we look at what we do not have instead of what we have. And that's the mistake we make. We look at what we do not have instead of looking at what we have. David said, uh, the Bible says, for he had no sword. A sword would actually have been useless, right? He did not need a sword. Moses is going to Pharaoh. And Moses in, is intimidated. And the Lord says, what do you have in your hands? God is not looking for what he has not given you. God is looking for what he has already given you. If he has not given you, he will give you before that day and he will not give you then you don't need it. You don't need it. You need what you need for his battle he has already given you. Remember it is his battle and it is not yours. His vita sio yako, hiyo biashara sio yako, ni ya kuinua neno la Bwana na jina la Bwana. Hiyo kazi unafanya unasema naenda kazini kwangu hapana sio yako. 
ni kazi ambayo itamletea bwana sifa at the end of the day we are servants of the lord whenever we are whether we are in the marketplace huko nje okay or we are in the church we are serving god through the gifts and the talents he has given us and the opportunities he has given us every time you think this is my business no it is not yours it is the lord's this is my family it is not yours it is the lord's you are just a steward this is my church no 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 you have no church because you did not create any members you are a steward and when you look at it from that perspective you realize that you only need the weapons of god what do you have in your hands what do you have in your hands could it be that you are looking for something else and yet what you need is in your hands more often than not that is the case more often than not you have what you need to fight and win you don't need that sword you don't need the armor you don't need height some people say if i if only i was tall like so and so eh kama ningekuwa na smile kama fulani i remember one gentleman a friend of mine telling me aki kama ningekuwa nikiongea kama wewe ai ningeenda mbali sana no he made the mistake if you compare yourself with others you will either become arrogant or you will be intimidated because there will always be someone who is better than you and someone who is worse than you so you will never be the best overall even the world's biggest billionaire is still wishing they were like so and so and the most beautiful woman in the world is still wishing they were like so and so you have what it takes so the last thing david did was to stand his ground and fight if you are going to be a conqueror you are going to have to stand your ground and fight so Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 says when you have done everything stand 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 sometimes the only thing the lord wants you to do is to stand not to run but to stand at the red sea the lord says stand still and see the deliverance of the lord in fact at the red sea all they were supposed to do is to not run back not to run around but to stand often times the only thing the lord wants you to do is to stand Bwana asifiwe. Everyone who is born again is a conqueror. You are empowered by the Holy Spirit to conquer. You have the word of God inside you. If you're not born again, you need to join the army of the conquerors. Because all these things will not apply if you don't join the army. But if you are born again, you are a conqueror. And in fact, Paul acknowledges and tells us we are more than conquerors. through Christ who strengthens us he lives in us he who lives in us conquered death if he conquered death what can we not conquer so as you go on in your daily business walk like a conqueror remember if you're going to be successful there are more than enough obstacles you cannot finish the list of obstacles and some people say some people spend all their time whining about how their situations are challenging complaining about how philistine is big the philistine i have a giant before me everybody has their giant before them do you think you have problems go and talk to your neighbor until then you realize oh 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 let me keep my problems right let me keep my problems nobody doesn't have problems but the bible says that every day has sufficient problems But you know every day also has sufficient grace to face those problems so stand like a conqueror do not look at the giant have the right perspective and again i will recap and say focus on the reward remember you are in real estate and you are thinking what will i do see that wonderful estate drone take a picture of it put it in your wardrobe put it in your mirror see it every day dream about it focus on the reward ignore the haters ignore them because there will be enough haters who will tell you you cannot do it remember the god of yesterday recount the victories of yesterday even when things go wrong ask yourself what has the lord done for me in the past what has he done for me start from the day i was born again i came from a family that did not know what it was to be born again If the Lord delivered me from sin, what can he not deliver me from? Remember the God of yesterday. Put on the whole armor of God. 
do not put on someone else's armor. Put on your armor. Your armor. Do not refuse to be intimidated. Refuse to be afraid. Because remember the Lord says, fear not. I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I will help you. I will stand by you. Do not be intimidated. Acknowledge the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Acknowledge. You know, for a Christian, everything you do is a battle. The moment you cross that line and say, I'm born again, I'm on the Lord's side, every single thing you do is going to be a battle. Every single thing. Family is going to be a battle. Church is going to be a battle. Business is going to be a battle. The workplace is going to be a battle. Because you are living in the world, and yet you are not of the world. You are living in a system that is outrightly against you from the word go. So you walk into that office, and you are in a strange place. The beauty of it is that the Holy Spirit and the entire host of heaven is with you right there. So who can, who can beat us? Who can beat you? Nobody. Okay, so I say acknowledge the battle is the Lord. Stand your ground and fight. Praise the name of the Lord. So today we can all stand and say, I am a conqueror. Tell your neighbor, I am a conqueror. In fact, tell your neighbor, I am more than a conqueror. Mimi ni zaidi ya mshindi. Bwana I will stop there. Over to you, Bishop Nancy. Thank you so much for listening to me. May the name of the Lord be praised. Wow, makofi mazuri, makofi mazuri. Wow, what a, what a message. Hallelujah. Attitude. Abia jirani yako, attitude. Eh, what made David win that battle? was attitude, winning attitude. That whatever I am going through, I am more than a conqueror. I want us to rise up on our feet and I want us to respond to that message. Ask the Lord to renew your attitude. Ask the Lord to open the eyes of your understanding that you may see the bigger picture. I want you to see yourself winning overcoming, succeeding in your life. The preacher has said, God cannot give you what you have not seen. It is until you see it. Lift your hands and I want you, I want you to tell the Lord, open my eyes, I want to see, I want to see this great potential you are putting me. I want to see, I want to see the bigger picture the good thoughts, the good plans you have for me. I want to see it, oh Father, this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to speak to yourself that whatever I am facing today, I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. I am winning. I am making it. I am succeeding. I am breaking through in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, for it is not by power, nor by might, but by the Spirit of the living God. If your prayer life has been affected, we have been told that we win our battles on our knees. We win our battles on our knees. Ask the Lord to renew your strength. Ask the Lord to strengthen your prayer life again. Ask the Lord to strengthen you again. Yes, in the name of Jesus this morning. This morning, remember the past victories. Remember what the Lord has done for you. Remember the breakthroughs he has given you. And you say in the prayer, in the hearing of God, that you oh, who are you, oh great mountain, before Nancy, before Jane, before James, before John, you will become leveled. Yes, in the day of Jesus, for greater who is there, greater is he who is in us, than the one who is in the world, our eyes are on you, O God, you 
you did it for David, you are doing it for us. You did it for David, you are doing it for us. And that which you have given us, Lord, that what we are using to win our battles, you have given us faith, you have given us salvation, you have given us sonship, and through what we face, our adversaries in Jesus' name, we worship you this morning. We honor you, God. Thank you. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you, mighty God. Another thing I want us to uh, to speak in the hearing of God this morning. Ni mechuriza. Ni wapi? Ni wapi maybe najipigania na nguvu zangu? Ni wapi maybe najipigania na nguvu zangu? Ni wapi ninaanza kutegemea nguvu zangu? Eh hey, Daudi, Daudi hakuwa na kitu ya kutegemea. Alipopewa the sword, he said I'm not used to this. I'm not used to this. I want you to lift your hand and mwambie Bwana kulingana na hii hali, Bwana kuli ambako nilikuwa nimeanza kuona kama ninaweza kujisaidia, ninaweza kujisaidia